It's everything they've done. The many jobs they've had and been fired from. The tons of hours practicing rolling their R's by saying butter, 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 so that they can reach their goal of being fluent in Spanish. The times they've been evicted from their homes because they couldn't pay the rent or had cars repossessed. The coaches they've had, the masterminds they've been part of, the courses they've taken. Listening to the Unshackle Your Life podcast with Debbie Colburn. And each week we talk all things money, business, personal growth, and we dive deep, exploring the hundreds of things that shackle us unconsciously from our own true potential. And you'll discover tips and tactics to start unlocking your shackles and release an extraordinary life. Thanks for spending time with me today, and let's dive right in. Guys, I'm super excited to be back here again each week. We've got some exciting stuff coming for you over the next couple of months. Are you really ready for this? Ready to hit restart? Yep, all things money, business, careers, life, and cracking open the hidden crap that's holding each of us back. Things like shame and anxiety, sabotages and drama, we create. And that funk, the feeling in the pit of our stomach that we're stuck, overwhelmed, and simply can't get out of our own damn way. Yep, you got it. We are going to get uncomfortable. And I'll be with you all the way as we navigate our way to create your breakthroughs. What's going on in your life right now? Maybe you're in survival mode, just barely getting by, living day to day, paycheck to paycheck even if you're making good money. I know, crazy, right? Maybe you're in a job or a career or business that's leaving you on empty, depleted, uninspired, or maybe you just can't figure out the right thing to do, or any stage between those. Maybe your relationships are fracturing and you can't figure out what's happening or why. If you're a brand new listener or you're one of our longtime fans, we're excited to have you here for a conversation about jumpstarting your life and breaking free of your shackles and start creating the life that you really want. So grab that drink, find the quiet spot, and pop your earbuds in. Welcome to episode number 74. We've put ourselves on autopilot. It's almost a natural thing for us to compare ourselves to others. Where did that come from? Our parents, our careers, our bosses, our business partners, our investors, our friends. Each one has had their input, for sure. The push to be a winner. Get first place, second's not acceptable, third or lower, loser. I want you to listen to this clip from two-time Top Chef finalist Shirley Chung. Shirley and Nina, one of you will be going home. I'm very disappointed in myself. It's going to be hard for me to face my family more than anything else. So close. I'm number three. (laughs) Don't hit your goal? They say you're a failure. How is it that we allow it to erode our self-confidence, our self-esteem, our self-worth, even our progress and our success? Where is the balance between seeking excellence, pursuing your goals and dreams, being better, winning, growing, using what you see others doing as a step to inspire you to step it up and do it in a healthy way, and allowing yourself to be infected with toxic comparisonitis, to suck you down to the I'm not good enough land. It's almost an epidemic, and yet it doesn't have to be just like type two diabetes. I know, weird comparison, right? Both are lifestyle choices. There are two words you must remember if you've been touched by comparisonitis. Two very critical C words. They are the antidote to comparisonitis, context and contrast. Those are the things that are always invisible 
when you see a post on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or Clubhouse or even on LinkedIn, any platform where you are not face-to-face -face with the person in open, honest conversation. When you hear someone's story back from their rock bottom, even mine, when you read a book that tries to capture someone's story, although great authors understand that they need to get back emotionally to the state they were in at the time of the event to write authentically about an experience. My friend Craig Stanlin does this brilliantly in his book, Blank Canvas, and you'll hear his story. Here's some different perspectives in an upcoming interview that we have in the early fall. Green grass and blue sky, soft melodic jazz and loud heavy metal, warm fuzzy cashmere sweater hugging you and harsh studded black leather jacket protecting you from the elements, fast and slow. Business owner that cares about each of their employees and contractors and the business owner that's only focused on the bottom line. Contrast is everywhere. Contrast makes the unseen more obvious. The sharper the contrast, the clearer you see others and their results. Contrast gives you a cleaner and less highly filtered lens. Contrast can be as simple as looking back over the valleys and lower peaks you already trekked through and looking up to the summit you're attempting. One against the other one showcased in front of the other. Simply recognizing that you don't know all the facts, the experiences, guidance, shortages, is in fact a form of contrast. And context is all the events that were going on before and leading up to the snapshot in time that you are seeing of someone else's life. It's everything they've done the many jobs they've had and been fired from, the tons of hours practicing rolling their R's by saying butter, 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 so that they can reach their goal of being fluent in Spanish, the times they've been evicted from their homes because they couldn't pay the rent or had cars repossessed, the coaches they've had, the masterminds they've been part of, the courses they've taken, and it's the action they've taken or haven't. I recently had an opportunity to participate in a photo shoot for the downtown high rise that I live in and then featured on their page on Instagram. And the photo is amazing. It's just one photo from over an hour and a half of photo shoot. We all know that, right? It looks like I'm living in Nirvana. Totally got my life together. Even reading Denise Duffield Thomas's book, Chillpreneur, if you look closely at the image. And by the way, that wasn't a random choice on my part. It was strategic. Right color book cover, right message for my brand. Context. What you don't know is that the building was struggling with a segment of the resident, resident base that was bordering on frat house mentality, out of control, and it was spiraling the wrong way. Why? because that's the image that they had on their Instagram feed. Come here, it's 24 seven party time. And that's what they attracted. I share that because it's a pretty basic example. In the white collar support group I'm part of, I am not alone in wondering what was the context in our lives when we made our worst decision of our lives. Have you ever thought about that? for any of the unfortunate decisions, bad decisions, bad choices that you've made in your life? What was really going on? Who were you around? What were people saying? So for me, it took me years to be able to actually see and put words to what I believed what was going, was going on in my life then. And yes, I was comparing everything I didn't have to everything I thought everyone else in my circles did, with a complete disregard for everything I did have that was already in my life. The amazing things, the great things, the good things, and even the yucky things. Even before socials, 
I saw the guys around me in the sports car racing world having great successes. I kept being told I needed to get my ass into a real race car, that I was wasting my talent. I could really go somewhere. Step up from auto slalom and from ice racing into a real race car. What I didn't see, and this is what happens when we're in survival mode, because we get this tunnel vision thing, is that the, those guys, and yes, ladies, they were all guys, were in two income families, no kids, and in pretty high paid government jobs that were big on time off benefits and short working hours. Well, let's be honest. Let's be really honest. When you're working for one of the big five accounting firms in the world, where 12 to 14 hour days on a salary are the norm, anything else looks like short working hours. It's actually why I only work five hours a day now. I try, that's functionally I work five hours a day four, maybe five, five days a week, but that's it. And that's why I was comparing myself to them, to those guys, the guys that I was looking at and not seeing the context. And I fell short in every area where they had it, in my opinion. So one thing I want you to really get is that your context will never be exactly the same as someone else's Ever. It's why when you buy courses that promise you can make a thousand dollars in a week, not everyone does, even though they have the exact same course. It's why when you go on vacation, your experience may be very, very different from your friends who might even be with you, who has similar likes to you. Just look at the reviews for any product or service. It's context. The incredible dinner at the five-star restaurant. Steak that melts in your mouth, says one reviewer. Sent my steak back twice, says someone else. Someone tells you three people really don't like you. Someone else can't stop sharing about how helpful and interesting you are. Context. But if you aren't open to the existence of context, the backstory, the undercurrent, the invisible events, the things you don't and can't possibly know, and you don't appreciate the value of contrast, the hot versus the cold, then comparisonitis will continue to rule your life. It will eat away at your confidence. It will erode your self-worth make you feel like you're never enough. You are enough. Each one of us is. It's our uniqueness. The exact things that make up context are what make us, us. Next time you catch yourself comparing yourself to someone else, stop it. Just simply stop it. Say this to yourself. I don't know their whole story. I am the only one who can do what I do the way I do it. It's just that simple. So we're here. We're at the end. It's time for that question that I ask everybody at the end of each episode. Take your time. Give it some thought. What is the worst thing that could happen if you unlock just one of your shackles today? So I'd love to connect with you and hear your stories and help out where I can. So don't forget to leave a comment or shoot me a DM or email me at support at momentsforexcellence.com. And yes, it's me reading each one of them and responding. Hey guys, if you found this podcast helpful and think it could help someone else, please send them the link. It's in the show notes and then drop a review in wherever you're listening. And then come on back and hang with us some more. Let us help you keep moving forward. We're simple to find on the interwebs, MS Debbie Colburn, that's MS Debbie with an IE, Colburn with an O-U-R squished between the B and the N 
on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and yes, on our website. See y'all next episode.